Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson, and this is Keep It Real. Keep It Real is all about real talk based on my 20 plus years of clinical experience. What we're really talking about is real food, real medicine, and real change. Hello, and welcome back. So today I'm going to uh, answer a question that I've been asked quite a bit recently, which is what is metabolic health? So I talk to patients uh, a lot about metabolic health and I write about it and I have used that phrase in videos before. And so people have asked, what is this metabolic health that you're talking about? So what it speaks to is the change of currency that happens in the human body. So what I mean by that, food is basically information for the system. And by information for the food, what I mean specifically is they are, all of our foods are made up of three main macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and protein. And these carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are information that helps to dictate what the body does, how it functions, and how the body is able to utilize those particular nutrients. Hence, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are actually not usable by the human body, at least from an energetic standpoint. It's the wrong currency. So the body has to convert food currency into human currency. It's like if you go to a restaurant and you're going to pay for your meal, and you're in the United States and you pay with Japanese yen, they're like, oh, we don't take Japanese yen here. So you got to go exchange that currency for US dollars. That's basically what's happening in the human body is these carbohydrates, fats, and proteins aren't usable for cellular energy. The body wants to use something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and that has to be converted. That currency has to be converted. So what the body does is all these nutrients get absorbed into our cells after they go through the gastrointestinal tract and metabolized and a very long chain of events in the body. They eventually find their way into the cells and inside the cells is the currency conversion machine. It's called the mitochondria. Most of our cells have hundreds, if not thousands of these little exchange units. And so these macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins feed into this currency system into the mitochondria. And then the mitochondria is associated with things that you might remember some terms from high school biology, like the electron transport chain, the, the Krebs cycle. And so these things get fed through the Krebs cycle, the TCA cycle, and also through beta oxidation. And these macronutrients get converted into human energy. Those things help to go into those systems and then they create adenosine triphosphate and the body could use ATP for fuel to help uh, power all the different organ systems, your heart, your brain, your kidneys, your muscles, all these things require this type of fuel that come from this uh, fuel source. What happens in metabolic health is when there's a healthy exchange of this currency and there's ways that we could evaluate from basic blood work even or basic clinical evaluation, how somebody's metabolic health is. And the way that we do that is we evaluate things like waist circumference, um, uh, increased waist circumference with fat accumulation around the waist. That's an, that's an indication of poor metabolic health. We can measure things like blood pressure. We could run blood work and evaluate things like insulin and glucose. We can look at things like triglycerides, important inflammatory markers like homocysteine and C-reactive protein. These are windows into understanding how a person's metabolic health is. So that's why this clinical evaluation is really key to understand where a person is at on the metabolic health spectrum. And if they're at a point where they're showing signs of metabolic dysfunction, which is incredibly common, then there's things that we can do to help regenerate their system, help to improve the sort of metabolic flexibility, metabolic function of their mitochondria. And much of this comes down to diet. Because remember, what feeds in and what influences the mitochondria are, is the food information that's going in. There could be uh, good beneficial information. And there could be unhealthy information. Think of foods that are highly processed, that have lots of sugar in them. This is not what our human biology is expecting. The body's expecting natural, whole type foods that humans have eaten for millennia. But if we start to consume things that are outside of what our genetics and what our biology is expecting, then things like inflammation tends to accumulate. 
fat accumulates and then there's overall decrease of normal exchange of this energetics ATP and mitochondrial function go down. Part of the function and health of the mitochondria is something called mitochondrial biogenesis. It's like the regeneration mitochondria to replace old mitochondria. And on the old side, there's something called mitophagy or the ability for mitochondria to recognize when they're old and malfunction and they need to be replaced by new ones. So these things are also influenced by this food information and the type of food that we introduce in our system very much dictates the health and function of these mitochondria, which is really at the root of our metabolic health. So first of all, we understand this currency exchange. We know clinically how to evaluate a person's metabolic health, and we know how to then regenerate their mitochondrial function by, by changing things in their diet. One of the things that is a natural process of this, this process of currency exchange from food currency to ATP is production of something called re reactive oxygen species, ROS. It's an inflammatory byproduct. And there's a certain amount that the body is very used to, very adapted to, it's no problem. And there's balancing mechanisms to help uh, decrease any adverse effect of this type of reactive oxygen species. But what happens when we are consuming unhealthy food information, then we're gonna get an overproduction of this ROS and there's gonna be stuck in a pro-inflammatory state. And that's why so many of these signs of mitochondrial dysfunction, like elevated waist circumference, elevated triglycerides, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high inflammatory markers. The reason why these are associated with cardiovascular disease, neurocognitive decline, diabetes, obesity, and other conditions is because inflammation is very much at the root of that. This inflammation is, for the most part, being produced at the level of the mitochondria and it makes the, the mitochondrial function sick and out of balance. And this is really the onset of many of these chronic diseases that we're trying to avoid. Hopefully in a nutshell, you understand that's what metabolic health is. It's the exchange of sort of food information, food energy into human energy, into ATP. This exchange happens in the cell at the level of the mitochondria. And there's lots of things that we could help to improve the function of the mitochondria. And there's lots of things that we can do to destroy the function of our mitochondria. And so that's what I would like people to really understand about when they're shopping for food. Is this healthy and supportive to my mitochondria or is it not? And that will really translate into general health of the rest of your body. So hopefully that little primer on what metabolic health is helps to um, shed some light. If you have any questions about that, just let me know. If there's any other topics in the future that you want me to discuss, let me know. Until then, keep it real.